so they can remember the past and remember yesterday. You cannot get committed to your yesterday. It's over, it's past, it's forgotten. The only level of commitment that you can make is to what you're committed to right now and what you'll commit to tomorrow. God is saying, I just want to find me some people that are committed. Everybody wants the power of God, but they don't want the commitment of praying and fasting. Everyone wants to lay hands on the sick and they recover. But we don't want to pray and fast and commit ourselves to God that he can give us the power to lay hands on the sick and tell demons they've got to go. And they run at the power of his name, Jesus. God wants us to be committed. Let not somebody shout commitment. We have to forget what was yesterday. The past is over. You cannot commit to it. Today, we must be committed. They say in wartime that that there were uh, airplane pilots and the airplane pilots would get inside the cockpit and they would radio back to the tower. And when they got so far down the runway, there was a point in time when the wheels began to come off the ground. Woo. They tell me that once the, once the plane got to a certain place, the pilot would radio back. He would say, we are committed in other words, we've come to a place where we can't turn back. We've come to a place where we can't shut down. We've come to a place where we can't back out of it. We've come to a place where we can't land. We're committed to the flight. If, if, you, ever, if you ever experience uh, being a hang glider, you're going to know you're safe as long as your feet are on the ground. But the minute that you put that tarp in the air and your hands are fastened, to the railing and you let go. That is the minute that you are committed to flight. When you get a parachute and jump out of a plane, there is a point in time where you cannot turn back, you cannot go back because you are committed. There was a time in my life when I jumped off of a bridge. I stood on the edge and I looked at where I was going, but I held on to where I was standing. I noticed as long as I held on, I wasn't jumping. But the minute that I let go and leaned forward, I launched out, and by the time I took a step, it was too late to turn back. Now, I want to say something tonight. There's a lot of folks leaning, but not letting go. You see them. The power of God starts moving in the church. The saints of God start getting blessed, and you see them leaning. Well, I like to go forward, but I better not let go. Well, I like to dance my dance, but I better not let go. Well, I like to talk in tongues, but I better not let go. Well, I like to run around that church, but I better not let go. We got way too many saints of God leaning, but not letting go. God told me to tell you tonight in Monroe, Ohio, it's time to let go. It's time to lean forward. It's time to get in. It's time to get <laughs> Not somebody and shout, let go. Has your lean. <laughs> Woo. Woo. I feel old time and power moving in the building. I said I feel old time and power moving in the building. Because too many saints want to hang on. Too many saints don't want to let go. But you got to lean forward. And when you lean forward, go ahead and let go. Because the thrill of letting go is a whole lot better than hanging on. Not somebody shall let go. Woo, come on, give God a shout. Woo. There's got to be a place. Woo. There's got to be a place. There's got to be a place where you let go. Can I, just, can I just throw something in? John chapter 20. Go to John chapter 20. You'll find that... that, that Mary Magdalene came to the sepulcher and the Bible said that she ran to the disciples. She ran away. She ran away and she went and got Simon Peter. The Bible said there was another disciple that Jesus loved. We assume that must be John. The Bible said they took off running. They took off running. The Bible said that one ran a little faster than the other. And the Bible said, when they got to the tomb, one looked in, but one got in. Yeah. See, it's...
It's not how fast you run. It's what you do when you get there. See, Simon Peter didn't make it too late. But Simon Peter is the one that received the revelation. What was the revelation? The napkin that was over his face, the clothes that were laying. He got in and he didn't just look in. And there's a lot of folks just leaning and looking but won't get in. I'm telling you it's going to take a level of commitment for you to understand. I don't care what my family says about me. I don't care what my co-workers say about me. I am so committed that if I feel the Holy Ghost when I'm at my cubicle, 